You want to know who sucks? Activision. <laughs> So I did a weird thing this week. I read a transcript for an earnings call from Activision Blizzard. Blah! Which was transcribed for me on a website called Seeking Alpha, which is for people who care about stock markets. Blah! Uh, this is, I guess, the kind of thing you do when you make a weekly show about video games. It's nothing I would have done three weeks ago. <laughs> But it was an interesting read. I think one thing before we start this episode that's interesting to bring up is that Activision Blizzard is the company that last year put out Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 and Crash Bandicoot 4, and the year before that, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. You would think Activision Blizzard would be one of our most beloved video game companies. What we have is this company, Activision Blizzard, ATVI, whose hits are hitting so hard that even relatively large successes aren't contributing anything substantial to their total revenue, which is ridiculous from these other things. But there are these two quotes that I think are pretty interesting from this earnings call. First is from CEO Bobby Kotick. With free-to-play entry points across mobile, PC, and console, Call of Duty experienced an increase of over 100 million players in a little over a year. Call of Duty is the template we're applying to our proven franchises, as well as our new potential franchises, as we attempt to grow our audiences to a billion players. New potential franchises. No promises. <laughs> Not a lot of details. Somebody's got some doodles on their desk for a new potential franchise. Uh, this other quote I find interesting. This is from Daniel Allegre, president and COO. Little known fact is most of the top 10 franchises on mobile worldwide are actually based on existing PC or console IP. And our franchises are in genres that are particularly well suited for mobile. So I think this is the current reality of Activision. Is that, yeah, probably for the rest of this year, we probably won't see a non-Call of Duty game. By the way, Activision Blizzard is the whole company. There is Diablo Mobile and Diablo to remastered. I'm talking about Activision's, the Activision half for most of the rest of this episode. I don't think Activision is going to publish a non-Call of Duty game soon, probably not for the rest of this year. However, it's also clear to me that they like to keep their dormant franchises kind of alive. <laughs> Even if they're just, you know, breeding grounds to become more successful mobile IP, they at least like to have these things, I guess. At this moment, all of their studios are working on Call of Duty games, but there is reason to believe that those franchises are not dead forever, that they can arise again. New potential franchises, possibly, even, maybe. So for today's episode, I'm going to give Call of Duty makeover tips to three of Activision's franchises. Which is to say, look, you look good right now. I like how you are. You shouldn't change a thing. But if you want Activision's attention, you're going to have to look like this. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 is the best version of what it is. I don't know if the developers could have made a better remake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 combined in one package. Several 30-somethings are very pleased with this product. But it's not a smash hit. It's not a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or a Call of Duty Black Ops 4. If we're looking at the total gaming landscape today, what people are playing, what people like to invest their time into, Multiplayer modes like Horse and Score Attack are not it. It's not going to cut it. So, here's what I've come up with for you. It's a mode called Don't Fall Off Your Skateboard. What we're going to do is we're going to drop 100 skaters into a Southern California high school campus. Whoever is the last person on their skateboard wins. Casual players will, of course, like to play it safe and skate along slowly, while advanced players will be performing complicated, risky tricks, which will, of course, make their arms grow, so they will, of course, be able to push other players over easier. Boom! Congratulations on quadrupling your player base, Tony Hawk. You see, the true absolute genius of Battle Royale modes is that everyone thinks they can win. When you think about it like a traditional deathmatch, a uh, high-skilled player versus a low-skilled player, if you're going first to 50 kills, low-skilled player's got no shot. But with Battle Royale, 
maybe, right? It's the maybe. Maybe if I find the perfect hiding spot, if I just get the one kill, all I need is the one at the end. Maybe me, a nobody with no skill, could win the whole shebang. And that's what we are offering our skaters. But then that's honestly not even the truth. Because high-skilled players still dominate. The actual, true, true, evil genius about Battle Royale modes is bots. Self-esteem bots. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add AI players into these games who are disguised as human players. <laughs> we're going to give them names that human... Like, their names, you wouldn't even know they're bots from their names. Their names are wordplay. <laughs> Sharkman. Sharkman's not... Shark... Sharkwave. Sharkwave is really good, actually. Sharkwave 09. You knocked over Sharkwave 09. Boof. And of course, the bot's not meant to be good. The bot's just gonna stand there and let you knock him over. But, let's say you don't even win the match. You're still better than Sharkwave. You barely remember. Like, what... what that was the, I was better than the shark guy, right? Do I get XP for that? I do. Bleep, 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 bleep. Thank you. I'll keep playing. For weeks and weeks. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot 4 is a very good video game. I think, I think if you released that exact same game 10 years ago, it would have been enormous. Most games under most other publishers, if they did as well as Crash 4, probably would be working on their sequel immediately. Crash 5 would be in development right now. But the thing is, Crash isn't, Crash isn't competing with Ori or, or Celeste. You know, Activision doesn't care about obscure titles that only sell a handful of millions. Crash is expected to be a star. Crash is expected to be exploding. Uh, this is a really funny quote also from uh, the earnings call. This is in relation to the mobile game. Crash Bandicoot on the run has been downloaded over 30 million times to date, and the team is now focused on optimizing the game for retention and engagement. That said, we continue to assume limited contribution for the game in our full year outlook. Meaning, 30 mil, it's good. It's a good start. It's just, it's not going to affect our bottom line, but it's good. To be fair, this game, to me, looks extremely ordinary. It looks like an extremely normal mobile game. I'm not really rooting for it. I am rooting for Big Crash, you know? And I feel like Crash 4 kind of had a very similar situation in its release to Sly Cooper 4. See, back in 2010 there was an HD Sly Cooper collection that had the first three games, nice and HD. That's a success. Three years later, Sly 4, a sequel in the tradition and style of those classic games you loved. And, even though it's good, kills the franchise. Crash 4 is kind of in that same thing. Three years before Crash 4, we had the tr Crash Trilogy. You know, remix of the first three Crash games. Great! Then, three years later, a sequel, which is in the tradition of those classic games. I mean, yes, Crash 4 looks good, obviously. It's got multiple playable characters. It's got skins. It's got masks. But really, it's those other games. For Crash Bandicoot's makeover, it's going to be simple, but it's not going to be fun. We need the right analog stick to fully control the camera. This is not a classic platformer anymore. This is a prestige title. This has to be a big deal. People need to feel cool and smart for purchasing this product. And that's why we're going to look at the three pillars of a Call of Duty story and apply them to our next Crash game. Brotherhood! One guy who uses fun swear words! You learned too much and now your boss has to kill you! You know, like, sorry Crash. This is a bigger world than you understand. Why story? You knew what you signed up for, kid. No! No! You get the picture. Will it be better than Crash 4? Absolutely not. Will it sell 20 million copies? I guarantee it. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This is a beloved video game. This was a game of the year at the Game Awards. I'm still not even sure why Activision wanted to publish a From Software game. <laughs> It sold 5 million units. That should be probably what you would... That's even better than what you think it would be. But still, it's not enough to be a key Activision franchise moving forward. Really, 
Sekiro, if you want Activision to like you like you, you're going to have to learn how to generate content. And I know that sounds dirty. It's dirty. It's what will have to be done. The reality is, man, just being a nice, sweet, good video game isn't enough if nobody's talking about you. You have to generate talk. You got to give them something to talk about. A little mystery to figure out. It's not enough to have new skins. You have to have leaks of new skins. It's not enough to have new weapons. You gotta have a hundred goofy YouTubers complaining about the brokenness of your new weapons. So here's my plan for Sekiro Season 2. Firstly, the Noid. Recently, iconic character the Noid was added to Crash Bandicoot on the run. Cute, but not the right fit. What's unique about the Noid is that he's a mascot that's meant to be detested. You're not meant to like this guy. Like the Mucinex boogers or the MyPillow guy. The Noid belongs in Sekiro. That's the fit. We're going to make him the hardest Souls boss of all the Souls bosses. Nearly impossible. I, maybe you hold a pizza and if he smacks a pizza, like you lose instantly. Something like that. Ironic YouTubers will love it. Hardcore streamers will love it. It's going to be boffo numbers on all platforms. Boffo. Controversy. So we're going to make some controversy. All right, so we're going to make this weapon. It's a knife. Let's make a knife. It's OP and broken. It's DLC. Also, we have this new cutscene, new story moment, where we meet Sekiro's secret grandmother, who is 104 years old. And she wants to wield the knife. Is it right to give an OP weapon to someone of her age? Who's to say? But think of the discourse. Officially, we don't have a statement we're making here. We're making a video game. This is non-political. Wink. Non-officially? Between you and me? Hell yeah, brother. Thanks for talking about our game all day, Twitterverse. Lastly, a Binya Binya glitch. So there's a glitch where sometimes a Binya Binya polywog will appear and knock you off a ledge. That's going to enrage our community. You make a tweet. Sorry, we don't know what's causing this. Sorry, we're going to work on it. We patch it out four days later. You're heroes now, baby. And also, a bunch of goofy YouTubers are going to make videos about how they miss Binya Binya. Wag the dog, baby. I will be back with more delayed input next Thursday. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. So an interesting part of the earnings call popped up in the Q&A uh, when Daniel Allegre says this. Early on in the pandemic, Bobby shared his personal telephone number with each and every employee for them to reach out if they needed any help. And I'm thinking, did he? I'm thinking, I'm thinking his personal telephone number. Uh, but then I found an interview from last April, April of last year with CNBC with Bobby Kotick in which he says that hundreds of employees took him up on that offer. Hundreds calling up Bobby Code. So I felt bad because <laughs> of everybody making videos on YouTube, 0% of them are positive about Bobby Code. If Bobby Kodak appears in a YouTube video, there's a 0% chance it's going to be a positive thing. Um, so I felt bad. I felt, I, felt, I felt inspired. I felt, you know, be the change you want to see. So I, in turn, gave my personal telephone number to Bobby Kotick. I figured it's the least I could do, you know. Um, oh. Oh, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to take this. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. No, I got, I've got time. I've got time. It's good. Are, are you okay? What's up? Did you do it? Bobby, did you do it? Okay, well, how do you know they're college kids? Three or more than three? Yeah, no, it's, it, that's bad. Can you still see? Stop calling it slime. Okay, how much slime is there? Oh my God. Well, don't touch it. If it hurts, don't touch it. Bobby, don't touch the slime. Bobby, Bobby, listen to me, Bobby. 
you're going to have to call their parents. No, I'm, I'm, <sighs> send me their info. Mm -hmm. No problem. Be well. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm going to have to cut this short. I got a few uncomfortable phone calls to make. <laughs>